Iggy Pop, le parrain des punks, le king du rock nihiliste et autodestructeur, l'iguane lassif, réceptacle des fantasmes rock'n'rolliens les plus extrêmes de plusieurs générations. Les Stooges en 67 à Détroit, la rencontre avec Bowie en 73, les albums historiques en 76-77 et le silence des 83. Tout au long de ce parcours, l'héros, la coke, le speed et l'alcool. Iggy a tout vu, tout vaincu et il nous est revenu. Who's Iggy Pop in 1986? Oh, he is. Same guy. Same guy, just sober. Sober? Sober, real sober, yeah. Did you have, yeah. Did you have to sober up? Sure, yeah. I was running out of gas. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah. Tell me, what, what, what was happening? Well, just uh, just getting uh, bored doing the same old stuff, you know, same, fucking the same old girls and taking the same old drugs. <laughs> so I got tired of it and just... Uh, I thought, well, what, why am I really in this in the first place? And the, the reason I was really in it was to try to create, to try to create a type of music that could explode me like a rocket out of the type of life that I, was planned for me as, an, as a sort of an American uh, middle-class person. You're a danger, little stranger, and I'll feel you So who was Iggy Pop when he began at the, in the 60s? That's your job. That's people like you talking about things like that. <laughs> My job is just to do things. I act, you react. Just a pair of glassy eyes. What did you do during all these years of, of silence? Well, um, I cleaned up around the house. Uh, I went to, to the store and bought my own vegetables, selected my own fish. Um, helped my wife with the cooking, um, learned how to try to get along with the landlady. Uh, I learned uh, learned how to I learned how to do things legally instead of illegally. Uh, drive the car, but with a license. Uh, go to the bank, but with a bank account. <laughs> things like that. Uh, learned how to be sober and how to work straight. Um, the the show I do tonight will be the first show I've ever done in Europe without being on drugs or alcohol. <laughs> That's a premiere, right? That's a premiere in a way, yes. Basically, he's he's the only person from the uh, he's the only person from the from the accepted world who un who has any understanding of what I'm doing, and uh, probably the only rock and roll collaborator I've had who understands me on an intellectual level. I can communicate with him on a level that's not kind of like, hey man, why can't you play it a little harder? You know, let's, uh, let's fuck in the street, man, you know. He has a little more to offer than that. Why the title blah blah blah? 
Uh, it just refers, it's like uh, a way of saying that I disrespect the things that the, that the media and the world in general are saying to me. You, it's you, like, it's a, it's a very polite way of saying fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but really polite. <laughs> What's, is it name easy to to have Iggy Pop after all these years? Iggy and Pop. Oh, it's a very good name. Don't smirk at me when you say my name. It's I'm a good. Smirking. Okay, it's a good name. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very proud. I'm what's, really proud. What's the pop part in you? Well, it's just my last name. <laughs> it's it's the part from the waist down. It just means um, it refers to pop in the sense of surprise. It means pop in the sense of energy, and it mean, means pop in the sense of trying to communicate instead of try, instead of, I mean, I don't work in a museum. I'm talking to the man on the street, and that involves commercial culture. So it's, it means having an involvement in pop culture. And what's the, uh, the iguana in you, the Iggy in you? Well, that would be m more the, uh, more the lascivious, voluptuous animal who likes to lie in the sun and uh, get fucked. I'm gonna break it, it's gonna keep on moving wild, keep on 